Hello and welcome, not to the Geek Club, but to my bed. The reason uh, we're using the bed today is that the table in the Geek Club is not big enough to record the full size of my organ. Um, that may have come across wrong, um, wrong video, um, wrong channel. Oh, oh, oh. Right, hello and welcome to the Geek Club. And um, today we are recording on the bed because I have this classical organ here which is too large to fit in the Geek Club, on the table specifically. But anyway, let's go on with this. This is a Viscount Cantorum II. And there may be a reason you've never heard of these. That is because they are incredibly, incredibly rare. And I, well, me and Neil, from the group, uh, he co-sponsored buying this, and we got it for a fraction of the cost uh, of its value. And uh, the only thing being, if I sell this, we split the difference. Uh, other than that, it's all good. Yep, got this for a fraction, actually about 10% of its value. So. This was made in around about 1994. The model goes, seems to go back to 1991, but there's very little details about these on the internet. So you can't see uh, what years they were made between, but uh, there's a brochure from 1991, uh, and the keyboard itself seems to have been built in 1994. So, enough talking about this. Let's have a look at what we've got. And here is the box, which has got the original uh, organ company address. If that still exists, I will cover that up. If it's not covered up, then that place doesn't exist anymore. And these things are made in Italy. New ones, uh, they're on the 6th at the moment, and they're over a thousand pounds. This was nowhere near that, or near its actual value. But, uh, obviously, this is the box, which carries also the seal number on. There's not much to see around the box, it's basically the same as here. Mainly to link it, I didn't know to say that. And if we pick out, this one does have everything. It has the books, uh, the original wrappings, everything. Well, apart from the original bag, it's the bag on my So, inside, uh, we have the original foam. <coughs> Exciting, isn't it? I know, really, it's from you, dirty boy, bugger. Okay, we've got some foam. And inside here, we have the piece de resistance of the Viscount Cantorum II. If I'm pronouncing Cantorum II wrong, then please feel free to uh, have a go at me in the comments. I know you will. So, uh, yeah, so it's got MIDI, it's got stereo, and uh, basically it is a digital organ. Uh, like. It's meant to recreate sort of a pipe organ, and the keys, I do believe, are weighted to feel like a pipe organ. They are quite heavy. Uh, and underneath the organ itself, it came with some original brochures and receipts, which we'll take a look at now. Right, and here we are with the two leaflets that came with it. Well, books sort of things. And we have the original brochure and the original manual so let's look at the brochure first and see what we get the cantorum tool in it and you can see it's really designed for use in churches small churches uh, little concerts and for teaching and practice and there you go big picture of it with some of the specs uh, one keyboard 61 keys uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, about 11 voices sort of things. Can be split into two. Uh, so you've got an upper and lower keyboard, digital reverb, controls. I don't want to go through too much of this because it's all on the key on the thing. Uh, but there, here you go. Gives you most of the specs there. Cabinet, dark, oak, colour. And options. Stand with pedal uh, for volume and bag. I have the stand with the pedal, which we'll see in a moment. On the back, it's just gone for about uh, who Viscount is in Italiano and English, and an address of if uh, I'm in Italy. 
the other one is the manual itself which you can also see is quite thin this is a very simple uh, keyboard so no need for big manuals with this one uh, there we go uh, obviously first parts in Italian as it's Italian and the second is English somebody's also put this thing in here which basically says you know if it's not in use take the plug out because it get hot yeah I think some people who may have worked at this wherever this was weren't too afraid with technology because they had to be told to do that weird but yes you get say a full thing introduction background about the company operating instructions demo music controls uh, English isn't perfect uh, but it's not Chinglish by any, any means. It's got MIDI. Yep, it has MIDI. It's 1990, well, 1991 when it came out. Uh, so it has MIDI. Uh, but that'll be for another video if I can get it to talk to anything. My computer. Uh, da -da -da. There we go. Uh, again, all different things going. Specs of the voices and rear panel outputs. And that's as basically all you get is one, two, three pages. <laughs> that's all it requires and got the original sales brochure here and as you can see Cantorum 2 portable this little guy was £650 on the 1st of April maybe a joke no 1994 Viscount classically voiced gore organs the organ is used to symbolize the praise that the church is continually offering to the glory of God well I think this one may be now praising the glory of dance music for its new career. Attention! This Canton 2 model has been equipped with a, with a selector located on the rear panel instrument. Oh yes, don't want to show too much of that because you'll be seeing it very shortly. So, it remains for me to set up the machine, the organ, and uh, we'll show you it working. Uh, just before we do... Don't ask me how the transformer came in the original box because the pedal and transformer for this came in their own box, which doesn't look original to the product. So, don't know how they came in the original box. Right, there it is on a stand uh, which had no instructions with it, so that was a bit entertaining. Random sock there. So, let's get in a bit closer and uh, have a tour of this thing. Right, on the top of this thing, which is very nicely uh, done in wood grain. Oh, yeah. We like wood grain. Anyway, with this black thing and these weighted keys, uh, we have two 10 watt speakers. So this is cool. So therefore it is stereo. I know, I'm being a prat. Uh, not going to show you on there too much at the moment because we're going to go through all those functions in a moment. But let's have a look at what this has got available. That one in the rear. Right, and starting from this side, which facing the keyboard <coughs> would be the left hand side, we have Made in Italy. And uh, you have this switch here, which stays, sound changes the entire sound of the instrument from baroque style to a romantic style. You have a fine tuning uh, pitch control there, which has a screwdriver uh, attachment inside, so you can very finely tune the pitch if you want tune it to other instruments and of course MIDI which will make it handy for my dance music if I can get this to talk to the main computer uh, over here you have proudly displayed as usual the Viscount name on the other side you have this port where the volume uh, pedal goes in this power switch that's where the power goes in headphones and left or right outputs for uh, an amplifier so Let's switch this thing on and see what it can do. Right, let's switch it on at the back and see what we can see. There we go. It took a few seconds to come on this one. It's weird. But we have initially no sounds. It does not select anything. So you can either select one here or you can select one of the uh, what I believe are mixture ones here. So uh, this one will split into two. Uh, so, basically, if you activate a voice, you can go to make sure this volume's too, not too high because this guy's loud. You can go right from the bass. Oh, 
all the way up to the top. Now you'll notice one failing of it is it's not touch sensitive. No, no matter how hard or gentle I press that, you get the same thing. But I suppose you do on a uh, an organ, really. So I suppose that's not out of place. Uh, but yeah, you can have one voice going all the way up, or if you hit this. Hang on. It does nothing, but if you hit split, you've then got two halves of a keyboard. So you can sort of, if I can get around this camera, play <coughs> chords. You can actually change the volume of the accompaniment as well. Oops. Like that. Now, you can add a little bit of bass in there as well. There we go. And you can change the volume of the bass. So, right, it has, yes, it has all these voices which repeat uh, on the bottom of the keyboard and the top of the keyboard. So let's have a look at the voices playing C. So we'll do with the bass on because it's more fun. So this is Borden. I always think Borden for some reason, but you know, not a church goer. <laughs> and you've got principal, flute, octave. Uh, Nizard, whatever that is. Don't ask me. You've got octave. Oh, so you can add build layers like that, different octaves. You've got mixture, three. You've got the trumpet. You've got the uh, Vox Celeste. Not much clue as to what that does. What in the voice? Apparently that's upsetting on an organ, but I'm not an expert on organs, so I do not know. Now to these effects, you can also add the tremulant, which makes them tremble, of course. And you can add, more importantly, some nice reverb in there. You can transpose. And down here, let's just split it. Okay, I need to choose something. Choose a no, okay. Why is that? Why won't you do that? There we go. Ooh, that's horrible. Trumpet. Oh, it knocks that off, okay. So if I do that. Yeah, I'm not the best player in the world. You may have noticed. Right, so. Down here, you've got some also presets which <coughs> allow you to select uh, these are a mixture of voices, so you've got PP, PP, you've got PP on your keyboard. P, which comes up with principal and flute. If I split, does it come up with IMF? It's got uh, all these different voices for this one, and different voices for that one. Reverb 
is a bit, eh. It's not the best reverb in the world I've ever heard in the world. And you've also got, if I go back to a normal voice, zero, one, principal, whatever, flute, and you've got the chimes. Of course, if you uh, choose loads of voices and you want this, whatever, there we go, split, there we go, there we go, and you want it to remember this, you press set, I believe, and hit one of these, and it will be remembered in there. So if you go two, nothing there, three, nothing there, four, nothing there, one. Your preset is back. Now, of course, what you all want to hear is this being played properly. Well, you're not going to get that from me, but there are other videos of, well, there is a video at the time of recording of somebody playing this. I'll put a link down below, but in the meantime, we can have a quick look at the demo songs. Some are uninteresting, some are interesting. And it sounds like my mobile phone is interfering with the speakers. Kill mobile phone. Right, so let's set this up and have a look at the demo songs. Okay, and here we have the demo song controller. So if I press on, and it's on number one. Okay, it's designed for churchy, so it's going to play churchy type music, but the good thing about this is you can interact with the keys and it doesn't affect it. But what it does allow you to do is build on the voices. So it's actually a good tool for uh, seeing what you like. Cool. Excellent! We are to this a bit. Not my favourite song in the world, so let's have a look at number two. Which one is singing that I am playing? There you go. Here's one that might come in handy for quite a few people. Funny thing about this song on here, which is something you can do with the other songs, but you can't with this one. It won't let you interfere with the voices. I wonder why that might be. Oh, there we go. Do do do. Let's activate stuff. Activate. Yes. There we go. Activated all we can. Hmm. Put back to charity. That's rather mellow, isn't it? And there's my preset. Mind you, I suppose that in a church, as this is designed really for church environments, the reverb doesn't need to be that brilliant because it will reverb anyway. And let's have a look at my favourite. Are you ready? Pretend that you know what you're doing. Unless you actually do know what you're doing. <laughs> but there you go, that's that one. I forgot what it's called. I shall uh, add that on to it uh, later. So, let's have a look at one more feature. And that is, of course, the Baroque Romantic Switch. 
on the back. Now I don't know if this will affect the demo songs, so let's have a look. Again number four. So this is in the Baroque setting. And let's have a look. It's hard wide, so it's short. Don't seem to affect that. Okay, let's keep that off. Off. Keep it on tutti. Reverb on it. So many in a small room. So have that nice go. It does go bloody loud, so I can't get it up. There you go. Yeah, it really could play in a church. That's loud. But anyway, yeah. So this is in the Baroque setting. Sorry? This is in the romantic setting. And doesn't do much on Tutti. Let's just kill that and let's just go to normal stuff. That's good. Anyway, uh, so yeah, that's in Baroque and. So that changes. Well, that was in Romantic. That's in Baroque. And that changes the entire character of. There it does. Changes the entire character of the sounds. Personally, I prefer it like that. Well, that gives it an edge. As if it's being blown so oh, that works on a trumpet. No, different. Well, there you go, that changes the entire character of a lot of the voices. So, yes, that is the Cantorum 2 by Viscount. From roughly this one, 1994, though it looks like it started in 1991. Uh, it's a high-end portable organ for obviously churches that can't afford a big organ or want something to practice, practice on or for mobile or for taking home and practicing on. So, there you go. Uh, thanks to Neil for helping me to uh, uh, purchase this and uh, we'll be having some fun with this. So, if you enjoy these sort of videos and other retro technology and gaming videos, then please subscribe. And you can join us in our Facebook forum found down below if you want more nuttiness. Other than that, uh, please like the video if you've enjoyed it. And thank you very much for watching! Oh, that was horrible. That was horrible. Let's just get out of You need to quit being dirty. You're a dirty boy. <laughs>